Greetings. Good to see you again. I hope you are all doing good and everything is going okay. Today, I'm going to talk about a very important topic, which is uh, related to students, basically postgraduate students who are in the master's or the PhD degrees. These uh, two categories of students that I always deal with have so many uh, problems or issues or questions starting their studies, their degrees. They know they want to do a PhD, they know they want to do a master's, but they don't know what's coming, what's next, what will happen next. It is totally unlike undergraduate studies, unlike the, the studies of your bachelor degree or even below that or the associate degree. This is a completely different story. And I am here to tell you about that. And I hope you will benefit from my advice as I have been working in academia for more than like say 30 years. So I started 1993, it's been quite a long time. I also studied in the US and I also spent a lot of time here in the UK as a visiting scholar. So I have a very good knowledge of what students in every, of, every one of these countries, whether it is in Oman or in the US or in the UK at Cornell, in New York or in the University of Florida or University of Reading as I am now. So let's get started and let's see how we can sort out your postgraduate studies. Great, so the first thing that, that comes to mind, um, and I already spoke about this, in another video on this channel on do you really need master's or PhD degree? That's a very important question because master's or PhD takes a lot of time, money, energy, and it is very exhaustive in elaborate process. It takes a lot of preparation. It is very demanding. So not everyone needs it. Let's say not needs it. You may want to have a degree, so you are a master's holder or a PhD holder, but you may not need it. It does not add anything or any value to your degree. You might as well take, for example, as, as a course, a short course. You may take exclusive course or business management course or some other courses that you may need. In the other video, please go back and listen to my video on instructions on how to enroll actually at Sultan Qaboos University where I am working. And that will teach you also some of the information you have to consider before actually taking the journey towards master's or PhD. So this is the first thing you need to think about, do you actually need master's or PhD studies and who is going to pay for it? Are you ready in terms of time, energy that is taken to actually accomplish a master or PhD? This is the first thing you need to be aware of. Great, so now you know you actually wanted to do master's or PhD. Now at Sultan Qaboos University, these are two different streams and in most universities it's the same thing um, usually masters is actually a bridge that will take you to phd and in some universities it's actually merged into one program which is usually five years masters go between one to three years depending on what university and what country and what system you are using and also the, the program itself so that's one thing you need to consider, the time frame wherever you are applying for your master's. Second thing for the PhD, also the same thing, it is variable. It may be as short as three years. It can be also as long as five or even seven years. Please note that three out of 10 students don't actually complete the master's or PhD according to statistics. They just drop out. They don't continue because of the high demand of these degrees and the long time it takes to finish them. So it's not as easy as you think, but it can be done. And of course, many graduates every year from many universities do graduate with their master's and their PhD. So the time is very critical. The program is also important. So take the time to find the program that fits your time, your money, your budget, because different countries or different universities would have different budgets. And also the requirements in terms of time and the program requirements, because in some cases you may take courses, in many other cases you don't need coursework. 
for the either the master's or the PhD. Some of them will require a module, like in many UK universities, you will take like a few weeks module, a course, a module. And in some cases, like in the American universities at Sultan Krabus University, for the master's degree, you need a semester by semester courses with minimum number of um, of uh, credit hours. You, at Sultan Krabus University, it is 24 credit hours and also the minimum GPA of 3.0. You must understand and learn this information before you even apply for your master's or your PhD. It is very important to highlight the need of this information before you go on and apply for your master's or your PhD. And one important thing besides the credit hours, the time, and also the coursework required. It's very important to be to know about the source of funding, as I mentioned before. The source of funding comes from where? Do you have a scholarship and what it covers? Do you have a fellowship? Do you have studentship? Are you paying on your own? Are your parents paying for your studies? Is your employer paying for your studies? Who is, is it a project? Is it a free scholarship from different country? So all this information is very important. There are opportunities out there. And there are opportunities for many students, for example, to study master's degree in uh, the UK. There are opportunities to study the Sultan Khabbas University employee, for example, can study in the European countries, certain programs under Erasmus Mundus program. There are US aid programs. There are women, there are uh, programs uh, offered by the United States tailored toward women, for example, and these scholarships are available. So you may need also to investigate these opportunities. Where are the scholarships? Where is the fellowship, studentships? Where the money come from? Who will support you? Is your employer supporting you? Would your employer give you even a leave to go actually and do your master's or PhD? This is very important to do before you commence your application for master's or PhD programs. Great. So now you know how, how the application process is done. You check out the other video, you will know the procedure. There is a procedure for every university and there's a procedure for every program. And a lot of the universities and programs will only accept around 20 to 30% of the applications. So out of 100, they will only take 20 to 30 students. They cannot accommodate everyone. And, and that depends on if you are applying for the Ivy Leagues, for example, in the United States, are you applying for Oxford? Are you applying for Sultan Krabus University? Where are you applying? There is, even if you satisfy all the criteria, even if you have good grades in your bachelor, you have funding, you have the time, you have a good idea what you to do, still may not be getting the opportunity that you are looking for. And therefore, you have to actually look into more than one program in more than one university, more than one program in more than one country. So you are always like having a standby uh, programs. So in case one fails to admit you, you have another program. Mm -hmm. Most of the programs will give you an initial offer of acceptance that you can confirm later. So it's not a problem at all to apply in different universities, different programs. Later on, you accept the one that meets your needs and will offer you a place at that program. Next is choosing or communicating with the department, mainly with the area where you wanted to study. What area do you want to study? For example, if you are studying, I am in plant sciences department at Sultan Krabus University. We have about five different programs. We have biotechnology, we have entomology, plant pathology, we have horticulture, we have agronomy. Which of these are your interests? You need to go through the program of the department. You need to go to the faculty in each of these different um, areas of research or expertise or sub-programs. 
and then you need to start learning more about that area of interest to you because it would have to match the interest of your advisor if you are going to actually make it and apply because a lot of the universities, a lot of the programs will assign advisor to you before they admit you, before acceptance. And a lot of the times you also need to do an interview and therefore it is very important to learn about the program, to learn about the faculty in the program and what they are doing, what kind of research they are doing. And your research interest would have to match the research of interest of the faculty who is in the future going to be your advisor. If they are not your advisor, they are going to be committee member because each postgraduate students would have to have a thesis committee made up of faculty in that same department. Mm -hmm. And therefore the committee has to match your requirements. Mm -hmm. Well, what you're looking for in terms of what you want to study or do research for mm -hmm. during your master's or your PhD. So in short, go and study the department, its objectives, its plans, the core course in that department, the faculty in the departments and their publications, which is extremely important because you want to match your requirements with their expertise. And even though you meet all the requirements, you may not find a faculty that will take you on board as a supervisor. In that case, you will have to uh, find another program. And that's why it is very important to check out the department, look into the faculty, and find out at least a general idea who is going to be your supervisor and who is going to be your thesis committee member. Another very important topic that you have to actually pursue and learn about before you get into even the application process. Okay, so now you are applying and most of the application nowadays are, are online that will require very important information about you, your previous degrees, like bachelor degree. In this case, you have very few things to have to understand. In some cases, the program you want to enroll into, for example, you are a graduate of plant biology in the College of Science. You came to the plant sciences department in the College of Agriculture and Marine Sciences. In order for you to do this transfer, there will be certain courses that you did not take you have not taken as a graduate student of plant sciences department in the College of Agriculture. You are a graduate of biology in the College of Science. And therefore, there will be bridging courses, something called bridging courses, a courses that you will have to take in order to meet the requirements for your postgraduate degree. So in this case, you will have to take some courses, certain credits, whether it is undergraduate or postgraduate, to be able to continue your master's degree. This is very critical. This is one thing. Another thing is, are you going for master of philosophy or master of science? If you satisfy all the requirements, usually you go to master of science, one year of coursework, one year of research. If you are going for master of philosophy, that means you are not meeting the requirement, whether it is English issue or it is a GPA issue. In this case, you go Master's of Philosophy, which is actually two programs. First, you do the coursework, you graduate with 3.0 and above, then you get enrolled in the research, Master's of by research. Eventually, you will get either high diploma, if you don't continue to the research part, you get high diploma. If you continue and do your research, then you will get Master's of Philosophy. It's not a master of science. If you meet all the requirements, especially English, and English, we know that you meet the requirements using the TOEFL, TOEFL, or IELTS, one of these two tests or other tests. In some cases in the university, we accept students who don't meet the actual requirements and teach them courses in English, but this has to be linked to your GPA in your bachelor degree. If you are below 2.5, then you will have to be Masters of Philosophy. If you are 2.5 and above, then you will be enrolled in Master of Science. So it is very important to learn what program you are going into. Are you going to um, Master of Science and then you can do both at the same time without interruption? 
one year of coursework if it is full time student one year of research work one one year of coursework and one year of research or you are going for masters of philosophy in this case you take two programs one is high diploma which is focused on the 25 credits of the coursework then from there you apply again for your research work and then at the end of the day you will have masters of philosophy these are the two programs that are offered in many different countries and they vary from country to country it is very essential and very important to understand if you are going to masters of science or you are going to masters of philosophy in both cases you will be able to do your masters but you need to know the difference because these are two different processes okay and they all dependent on your gpa of your undergraduate studies and your level of english skill measured by what by ielts and toefl so that is very also important to know beside all what i said before great so now you know that you are enrolled you know that you have been accepted you are ready to come to the university first thing to do as a master student you will take coursework and in some cases phd students will also take some coursework as i mentioned these are bridging courses to cover for your deficiencies this is also done in many other countries in many different countries of the world in many universities they will give you bridging courses or complementary courses to satisfy what is required from you to be enrolled as a full time masters or phd student so now your journey starts at a post graduate student whether you are doing masters or phd we look at masters degree as a bridge between bachelor degree and the phd the actual phd is the one that takes a long time but masters also can take a long time especially if you are part time in many universities masters degree can be one or two years minimum but it can also extend to four years if it is part time therefore it is very important for you to be prepared to continue these four years to accomplish the one what is required from you and also to get prepared for your research project and your coursework this is extremely important one very important aspect of masters or phd degrees when you study coursework they are completely different from your undergraduate students coursework even the scale is different and in undergraduate in many universities even in as sultan qabas university you can get c minus d plus d and you will pass the course fine you cannot have this in your masters degree or phd the courses would have to be a minimum of a gpa of 3 2.7 the cut off in extreme cases and this is also the same case when i studied at cornell university for my masters as a as a masters or post graduate student you must have or achieve at least 3.0 out of 4 gpa and therefore you have to aim for this high level of demanding work and that's why it takes a lot of energy a lot of work unlike undergraduate courses where you have a lot of ways to improve your grade you can do lab reports you can do field trip reports you can do projects you have quizzes you have exams you don't have this luxury in your post graduate courses and therefore it is very important to actually learn about the courses that you are going to register and take before you take them how demanding they are how is the professor what how is the way he is teaching how the grade distribution is because you really have to maintain a minimum of b which is 3.0 out of 4 scale of gpa and this is very important and very critical when you take courses in all courses a lot of the courses also in your master's degree will require that you do your own studies your own research your own proposals critical review of papers presentations a lot of things that are demanded from both graduate students basically the idea is to sharpen their skills have them ready to be a really scientists going toward the phd eventually but all of these requirements are very important and they are taken into consideration whenever you start any masters or phd program and you take 
postgraduate level courses. So the demand for postgraduate courses is a lot more and completely different than your undergraduate. Just like when you are shocked to discover that undergraduate courses are different from high school, this is the same level of shockness. We'll also be shocked to find out that postgraduate courses are not the way you expected them. Sometimes they don't have actual practical um, side to it. A lot of presentations, a lot of reading, a lot of critical review, a lot of writing also. This is to sharpen your skill towards your master's or PhD. And therefore, it is very important for you to be prepared to do this work, which takes a lot of time. And so you have to allocate the time for it if you are going to succeed in your master's or PhD degree, taking coursework during these degrees. So you can do it. It's not complicated. If everybody's doing it, we all have gone through this. But eventually, coursework in the master's and the PhD are completely different than those in your undergraduate studies. And you need to be aware of the requirements of this core course, it's either the writing, the reading, the examinations, the assessment itself, and the grades that are expected from you in these courses. Having done the coursework for your master's or PhD, now is the time to think about the project. Usually we think about the project early on because before we choose the advisor, as I mentioned before, you need to study their CVs, you need to study their publications. You probably have to sit with them or interview them in some way to be able to match your requirements with their requirements in terms of research. And so in, you are done now. You are very qualified to do research work because you have completed all the course requirements. Now is the time to think about the research itself. The topic is usually you have an idea or at least within your idea. For example, if you are in plant sciences, you could be doing anything related to horticulture, related to agronomy, plant pathology, entomology, biotechnology, genomics, related fields basically in plant sciences or plant biology. So you know this information already ahead of time when you apply before you take the courses. And now you took the courses, you took the courses in specialized areas of your interest and also Courses for skills like research methodology, for example, statistics. You will also take some of the courses in statistics. You take presentation skills, for example. You take seminar courses, these kind of things that will prepare you for the research work. Now you need to think about the research. And the best way to think about the research is to go and sit with your potential advisor. If you are not already allocated to an advisor, sit with your advisor, listen to him and see what he will tell you this is very important and very critical. Now you have an idea what you wanted to do. You need to sit with your advisor to discuss these ideas because now the implementation of this project or these ideas need to be also in written format. It needs to be presented to the department or to the committee. Eventually you will have to start your work on your research, whether you are doing masters or PhD. Of course, masters is usually a short project six to one year term. PhD usually two to three years, sometimes four years. So there is a difference in the time frame, complexity of the research, the requirements for the project, the writing, but eventually it is the same idea. It is a research project that you will have to agree with specific person, an advisor, a mentor, who will supervise you. And then sometimes you have a committee that will come, all of them will supervise your research work. So what do you think about, or what are the considerations to carry out a research work? That will be our topic in another video, because that is very important and also elaborate like this video. And I need time to actually pinpoint the series of information that you need to have at hand before you commence thinking, drafting a proposal and carrying out your search project. I wish you good luck. Thank you for your time. And ask me if you have any questions because I can help you whether you study in Oman, you study in the US, in the UK. I have students all over and I can 
be very helpful. Good luck, take care, and goodbye. Thank you.